When you said all this with sickness and so it comes down to the guilt in the mind and the projection, and I tried to work with this infection that I have. I did it for like three weeks, like going on, looking what's happening, trusting, being completely fearful, knowing medically what it is, how it should be treated, what it can lead to, and on and on, joke to Gianni with it and so, about it and so. But it, it always popped up in my mind. You said there was it. fear there too, and yeah. Jesus says in the Course, when there, whenever the, the fear is, is, is great, like it's really strong in your mind, he says uh, a mixture of magic and miracle may be necessary. So in other words, you were working with your mind, with your thoughts, but it's like you hit like a real deep, fearful point, really frightening. And then it was beautiful how you described how you you went and you went to this doctor who who was unlike doctors that you've known, and, and the doctor, what the doctors helped you with, and, and treatments, and so on and so forth. And that's the magic part, you know, where Jesus says, when you're too fearful, a mix of magic and miracle is necessary. So you followed your prompts when the fear started to el escalate, you know, mm -hmm. because you were like, oh my gosh, and and the prompts and the guidance guided you to that that man, that doctor. Mm -hmm. Having been a doctor yourself, this was a doctor. You see how the Holy Spirit works with the belief system. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to snatch it away. It's not like you, you're like a like a child with a blanket, like a security blanket, and he's like ripping and tugging. So trying to pull it out of your fingernails, you know, it's not not the way the Holy Spirit works. It's it's using the things that you still believe in, and uh, in this case, it, it can be treatment, medication. In some cases, people have worked with things for years, and they they're not so much into the medical model, but they still are into alternative therapies, and they maybe go for some herbs, or they go for some Reiki. Or they go for some, some, some massage, you know, or for for certain types of treatment, rolfing, or some kind of deep massage, or something like that. It's all magic. All of that is magic. Reiki is magic. Um, rolfing is magic. Uh, you know, you had herbal uh, treatments like Gandhi used. He, he used a lot of herbal treatments instead of what we would call medicine as the world defines medicine. But it's all magic when the mind's too fearful of the of the release of the entire self concept, you know, that's what it's where we're heading with this, then that's where the guidance comes in. So, you know, and it it is something that you're working with on a daily basis. You know, it, you were sharing that today when we were going through the introductions that you you're feeling all this love and gratitude and there's like healing occurring. And, and the gratitude pouring through you, and then there's another part of your mind that just feels sick, mm. you know, it, and, and you're not trying to dress it up or pretend about it, you know. That's what we've been talking about, that's what we were talking about with, with Noel saying, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling, without seeing it as, it's a problem. You know, that's the tormenting thought in your mind, but this is, a, this is an opportunity, again, day by day, moment by moment, you're just following your guidance. And the Holy Spirit is working with you what, with what you believe, to help loosen the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, I've always t told people, you know, be gentle with yourself, you know. For some people, that looks like, some people will say, well, you know what gentle for me would be is, I need to go have surgery. Uh, I need something, I need a, some cancerous tissue cut out uh, of my body. And that's the way that it looks. The prompt can be for just that. You know, go into the hospital, have the surgery, have it taken out. Or, you know, uh, I've worked with people that, you know, were on heart medication and, and uh, diet regimens and exercise regimens and everything to, to treat things like like heart problems and cholesterol and things like that, you know, that involve the body and the systems of the body. And all of that comes back to following the prompts, you know, really tuning in and, and doing what, what you're guided to do. 
And in the end you start to, you know, you start to realize that, that magic is not evil. Um, you, you keep doing the mind training, you keep joining in purpose and lining up in function, and the more you line up and line up and line up, you just let the light just kind of pour through you and shine through you and everything. But that's the process of it. It's not, at no point does Jesus come out in the Course and say, you know, magic is, is evil. He just doesn't do that. He, it's more of a mixture kind of thing. It's more just something using, letting the Spirit still use the symbols of the world while they're still helpful and not holding yourself guilty because of it. But I sense sometimes the ego comes in and wants to like try to torment you, you know, with something like, ah, look at that, or ah, look at that. Still, still not good enough. Mm. Still guilty. Still human. You know, that's, that's how the ego works. It's trying to make a case mm. to try to torment the mind. And you, you can say, listen, I'm taking my steps. I'm taking my steps here. And, and this is what I was guided to do, to help minimize and loosen the fear. Because the fear level was getting too intense. Mm. You know, so it's practical. Mm. Don't let the ego torment you with those mm. tricks. Mm. It's about relieving the fear. Yeah. So you can go on. Yes, exactly. It's just relieving the fear so you can go on. And you're on a journey of, of following problems and, and, you know, it's going to be a glorious journey. It's, it has been a glorious journey. It's, Jesus is really not anti-medicine. He's just, he's just saying, you're going to have to unplug from all the concepts. So, whichever concepts you believe in, I'll use them. I'm not going to steal them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to take away from you the, the little that you hold on to. You know, I'm going to have you start to gain more confidence in forgiveness and more confidence in, in this inner freedom and healing. And then as you do, things will slowly start to fall away. But I'm not going to, to take it from you, you know, as if like, oh, don't take, this is the last things I believe in. It's more like, it's okay, they will drop. Like you were saying, you don't even have to call it questioning. It will drop when you're ready for it to drop. And it's that simple, you don't, you don't have to make it into such a struggle. Jesus says in the Course, you, you don't, if a baby has a pair of scissors in their hand, and you know that the scissors could do them harm and cut them, but you just don't try to rip the scissors away from the baby. The baby will scream. To the baby it's just a, a toy. <laughs> and all the baby perceives is, you damn <laughs> whatever, <laughs> taking my toy. You know, it has no concept of sharp or of being cut or anything. There's nothing there. All it's seeing is you're trying to take my toy. Ah! Bloody murder, you know. <laughs> bloody hell you're not taking these scissors. You know, because it doesn't know that they're scissors. You know, it's just, it's fun. It's shiny, it's smooth, you know, it's, you know, and it's mine. <laughs> it's in my fist. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, that makes, you know, so I think that's a really strong metaphor that Jesus uses in the Course. You could say that with a lot of things, you know. The Holy Spirit really doesn't take things from you. You you have to release them. You have to outgrow them. It's the Holy Spirit is not in in a and they're trying in a tug of war, <laughs> saying, "Give it! You've got these idols. Now get to me!" Ah, back and forth, you know. It's not. It doesn't work that way. You have to voluntarily outgrow it. You know, that's the only way that it works. I know that's how it's worked in my life. I, I will renounce that for, for Lent. I will give up dot dot dot. Then you find it. You're obsessing, thinking about whatever, you know, after Lent is over. Like, well, I don't know. I still think I might want, you know, 
and you just go back and forth, and then it just means you're not really ready to let it go. Don't beat yourself up for that. Just go on. Trust. Don't go when you don't want it anymore. It's 